Breaking news this afternoon as FIFA are in advanced talks over suspending the Russian national team until further notice. OK, as you can see, our chief reporter, Kave Sokol, joins us now in the studio. So, Kave, this is massive breaking news. What can you tell us? Look, I think later today uh, it'll be announced that Russia have been banned from international football. Uh, FIFA at the moment are in advanced talks over suspending the Russian national team until further notice. And FIFA are working closely uh, with UEFA on this, and mm. there should be an announcement later today. Now... We had the situation yesterday uh, when the FIFA Council Bureau met and they decided to stop just short of banning Russia. Mm. Uh, they said that Russia would not be able to play any home games, uh, they wouldn't be able to call themselves Russia, mm. they would have to call themselves the Football Union of Russia and there'd be no anthems and no flags. FIFA also said yesterday that further measures may well follow. And these further measures are going to follow very, very quickly because mm. they will announce later today that Russia has been banned. Yeah, it sounds like lots of sporting organisations are starting to mobilise, doesn't it? I mean, is this what's happening? You know, other organisations are almost putting pressure on FIFA, on UEFA to do something. I think this decision that was taken yesterday by FIFA... Uh, the FIFA Bureau is made up of the FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, and also the six presidents of uh, the six football confederations. So it was a global decision. The decision wasn't just taken by Gianni Infantino, it was by the president of the South American Football Confederation, for instance, the president of UEFA as well, the president of the Asian Football Confederation. They decided yesterday to stop just short of suspending Russia. A lot of people thought they would suspend Russia. Obviously, there has been a lot of criticism of that decision as well. And we've also had the situation where individual football associations have come out and said, look, it doesn't matter what the FIFA Council Bureau have decided, we are just not going to play against Russia. Mm -hmm. For instance, we saw Poland who've probably been the most vociferous uh, and they've been standing shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine on this, saying no matter what happens, while Russia is invading uh, Ukraine, while people are dying in Ukraine, while people uh, are fleeing Ukraine, we will not play against Russia. It doesn't matter even if we're going to lose out on a place in the World Cup finals. Uh, and it looks like, actually, uh, Poland, if this decision is made later today, it would mean that Poland would get into the next round of the playoff because at the moment they're supposed to be playing Russia and the winner of that game uh, would uh, play against the Czech Republic or, sorry, my mind's gone blank for a moment, uh, would play against the Czech uh, Republic or Sweden. Sweden, yes. For a place in the World Cup finals. It would obviously mean that they would go straight into the second playoff game, uh, uh, playing against Czech Republic or Sweden for a place in the playoffs. So as things stand, we're expecting a decision later today, which would mean that the Russia national team would be banned from playing any international games until further notice. Has this at all surprised you that FIFA have now coming out, you know, saying this now, you know, this, the fact that it's gathering momentum at all? It's perhaps surprising that it's happened so quickly. Mm. Uh, but yesterday, the information we had was this is not a final decision. Mm. Uh, it was made very, very clear to us that depending on what happens in Ukraine, yeah. that Russia may well be suspended. Now, I have to be honest, I didn't expect it to happen within 24 hours, mm. but it was made very, very clear to us that this decision is not a fait accompli it may well change depending on what happens uh, in Ukraine. Obviously, we've had the situation where there has been a lot of criticism uh, about this decision not to ban Russia uh, straight away, uh, mm -hmm. but it looks like uh, people at FIFA, people at UEFA, people at all the confederations around the world are listening 
uh, to the football world. They're yeah. also listening to these individual football associations who are coming out and saying we're not going to play Russia and they've decided to react quickly. Yeah, and it's like they're almost forcing FIFA's hand, aren't they? They're sort of stepping away from it. Um, look, we know that um, Russia are due to play in the Women's Euros. Of course, that's a UEFA competition. So do you expect UEFA to follow suit quite quickly? Yes, what I'm being told is that this is a decision that is going to be taken by all the confederations and also obviously uh, FIFA are talking and working very very closely uh, with UEFA and I think it is significant that there is going to be a UEFA executive committee meeting at five o'clock UK time today so I think there will be more developments from that meeting as well that executive committee meeting is made up of the 27 uh, most powerful men and women in European football interestingly there's a representative there from Russia, the president of the Russia Football Union, and there's also a representative there from the Ukrainian Football Association. So they will both be at this meeting at five o'clock uh, this evening. I think at that meeting, it'll become clear that Russia have been banned from international football. I think we may get an update as well on uh, the status of UEFA's attempts to extricate themselves from this sponsorship deal that mm. they have with Gazprom, yeah. the uh, state-owned Russian energy company. I think it's going to be complicated. It is something that UEFA's lawyers are looking at to try and find a way to get themselves out of this sponsorship agreement because Gazprom are one of their biggest, if not their biggest sponsor, and I think the deal they have with UEFA is worth something like £30 million a year. Gosh. Just finally, I mean, this is something that Rob touched on. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult situation, isn't it, in terms of people might at home saying, why aren't they doing it straight away, or, you know, and just getting in, on involved in it. Um, the, the problem is, you know, they suspend them and then R Russia pull out of Ukraine and then it's all over, you know, and so suddenly they've got a situation where they've got to put teams back into competitions. Is that why this is so complicated and perhaps FIFA and UEFA are just holding back at the moment? Yeah, I mean, the, the situation could change yeah. uh, again. I don't think we can sit here and say 100% uh, Russia will not play Poland in the uh, playoff. Yeah. Uh, it all depends on what happens uh, in Ukraine, whether Russia stop what they're doing in Ukraine. But the bottom line is there are lots more important things in the world than football at the moment. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Ukraine is much more important than uh, World Cup playoffs. And, and that is really something that strikes me, especially when I speak to people from the Polish FA, because they are the ones who have been strongest on this. They've said to me, look, Carve, football doesn't matter. Yeah. We don't care. Honestly, we don't care about the World Cup finals. At the moment, football is totally insignificant. What is important is what Russia is doing uh, in Ukraine. And we will do whatever we can to try and stop that. Don't even ask us questions about uh, the World Cup finals and playoffs. The bottom line is that we will not be playing Russia. And FIFA and UEFA, I think later today, you will be hearing them say uh, quite clearly that Russia is going to be suspended from international football until further notice. OK, Carve, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, Carve says it's been a day of major developments in the last hour alone. The International Olympic Committee has called on all sports to ban athletes from Russia and Belarus from competing in international competitions. Now, the IOC's executive board said that while it does not believe in punishing athletes for the decisions of their government, many athletes from Ukraine are prevented from taking part because of the attack on their country. They've added that if a ban is not possible for organisational or legal reasons, such athletes should be classed as neutrals and not compete under the name Russia or Belarus. The International Paralympic Committee is to meet on Wednesday to discuss Russia with the Beijing Games starting this Friday. Now, there's also fresh developments today on Roman Abramovich. The Chelsea's owner's spokesperson claims that Abramovich is attempting to broker peace between Russia and Ukraine. Abramovich handed over stewardship of the club to their foundation trustees over the weekend as he tried to distance himself from criticism over Russia's invasion. Now, it appears now that Ukrainian officials have reached out to Abramovich through the Jewish community and his spokesperson claims he's taking an active role in peace discussions. 
Chelsea released a 24-word statement yesterday calling the war horrific, but stopped short of condemning the situation. I would like to hear a very clear and unequivocal statement from Abramovich that he condemns the action that Russia is taking, well, the action, the, the illegal and brutal a murderous invasion of Ukraine. I would like to hear him say those words and clearly and unequivocally uh, stand by that condemnation in a public way because I think that would be uh, very powerful. He, he is fortunate enough to enjoy much of what we enjoy here in, in, in the West. You know, he has access to sport and culture and a way of life that he wouldn't otherwise have. And so it's, I think it's incumbent upon him to take that strong position. Well, events in Ukraine have already had a huge effect on the game of football, with support shown at games up and down the country over the weekend. Crystal Palace manager Patrick Vieira says sport can make a difference. Sport in general. I think uh, football is not different from other sports. I think if we can use um, the sport, the notoriety of sport, to influence in one way or the other the peace around the world, we should do it. And... You know, sport and football in particular is really popular worldwide and football is really important. And if we can use that importance to bring peace between those two countries, I think we have to do it. Football, which it has always done, is there to support and, and, uh, and help, then that's something that we obviously all would love to do. It's incredible. And uh, it's incredible, and at the same time, uh, it's uh, stupid. Only, only to think a situation like uh, like this. And, uh, well, we need to have the, the peace in the world for everybody. Obviously, it was an emotional day for Alex Zinchenko on Saturday. Um, given the way you rotate, you would normally expect him to play. Will he? Will he figure tomorrow? Yeah. He's, he's absolutely fine, is he? Is absolutely, right? yeah. I think it would be good for him to to play and show the reason why he's here. He's a magnificent player to play football.